In this video, we are going to look at solving trig functions. And this is a key concept in every single RB maths exam. So we need to be familiar with how to solve a trig function. So a simple example of a trig function that needs to be solved is if we have sine of x, and this might have a bracket uh, around the x, or it could be a theta, either or, some variable, and it's going to equal some fraction. So sine of x is equal to a half. And if you are familiar with your trig ratios, and there is another video on trig ratios, we, we looked at sine, cos, and tan of certain angles, and they equal ratios that we need to remember. And we need to remember them in non-calculator exams. So 1 and 2 is part of one of the magic triangles, and those magic triangles helps us uh, solve these types of questions without a calculator. So maybe revisit that video if you haven't seen these ratios before. But what I'm going to do is if I have my, my trig function in this form where sine or cos or tan of something equals a ratio, I need to look at these two terms and think what triangle was that part of? And this is part of the triangle where it has 1, 2, root 3, where this is 60 degrees, this was 30 degrees, and 60 is the same as pi on 3 in radians, and 30 is the same as pi on 6 in radians. Okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what we want to do is we want to think about sine of what angle? We want to be looking at the angles in our triangle. Sine of what angle is going to be 1 over 2? And this is the challenging step. We need to try and des decide which angle it's going to be. And hopefully you saw that pi on 6 would be our angle because the opposite to pi on 6 is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2, and sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so once we, I've, once we have identified which angle it is, I like to call this my tool angle. My tool uh, angle, so tool x, or you can say theta, I'm just going to put x, will be pi on 6. Now, I call it a tool angle because often our question has a given domain, a domain where we need to solve our function uh, for x, and an example would be 0 to x to 2 pi. And this means that we're going to have multiple answers uh, within our given domain. So with our tool angle, I know that all of my angles will be pi on 6. Uh, it will have some sort of link to pi on 6. It will be pi on 6 away from the x-axis, and I'll show you what that means. If we draw our unit circle with our quadrants, all uh, stations to central, ASTC, we need to think about, okay, sine gave us a positive ratio of 1 on 2. What are the positive sine quadrants? Positive because we had a positive ratio. And the positive sine quadrants are the S quadrant and, of course, the A quadrant. A stands for all, S stands for sine, T is for tan, C is for cos. So once we know that our our trig function here, sine was positive a half, we need to look at the positive sine quadrants. If this was negative a half, we would be looking at the negative sine quadrants, T and C. So our answers within our domain, which is one full circle, because this is zero, pi on two, pi, three pi on two, two pi, will be pi on six up in either of these two quadrants. So if we start at 0 and go up, and if we go all the way over to pi and we go up, these two red lines here, this one here and this one here, will be our two solutions for x. And this angle is simply 0 plus pi on 6, which will be pi on 6, and this one's pi minus pi on 6. You might need to do some fraction work there. Pi minus pi on 6. Make sure we, we know how to do this just by doing a simple common denominator, so this would be 6 pi on 6 minus pi on 6, which is 5 pi on 6. So they will be the two solutions for x for this question in our given domain. So therefore, x will be equal to pi on 6 and 5 pi on 6. Now, there aren't any solutions in the third and fourth quadrant because they will be negative sign values. And hopefully, through the, the, the trig ratios video in the unit circle video, we remember that sine is the y value of any angle. And if you have a look at 
the two red lines that I've drawn, the Y value is the same. It's going to be positive a half uh, compared to its hypotenuse. So these are the two solutions. Uh, I am just going to quickly draw what the graph looks like and how we can picture this if it was a graph. So a sine of X function just simply looks like this. Where this would be pi, this would be 2 pi. This here would be pi on 2. This here would be 3 pi on 2. And what this question is saying graphically is when is this function equal to positive a half? Positive a half would be here because we know sine goes up to 1. And it's going to be equal to a half two times. It's going to be equal to a half here and here. And if we go down and find those two values, this will be pi on 6. And this will be pi minus pi on 6, which is 5 pi on 6. So we can either solve it using our magic triangles and our unit you know, circle, or graphically, this is the times that it equals a half in the first period. Okay, so that's an example of solving a trig function. Your questions probably won't be as simple as just sine of x is equal to a half. They might try and give you a little bit of a tricky equation to begin with. So an example might be 2 cos x and then plus 3 is equal to 2 and they'll say solve for x and you might think well that's a lot different to, to what the example up here was but all they want you to do is try and rearrange this equation to get uh, some trig ratio so in this example we would put the 3 over so 2 cos of x would be we'd subtract 3 from 2 it'd be negative 1 cos of x would therefore be negative 1 half and then we would just take we would look and uh, see which angle where cos is a positive a half, which would be 60 degrees because adjacent over hypotenuse. Then we consider the negative. We'd look at the two negative cos quadrants, which would be this one and this one, and we'd do the same process as we did here. So we, we can just rearrange our equation to get our trig function equaling our ratio. Okay, I suggest you practice a few of these questions, so good luck.